If there is any question about the popularity of Wayne Newton, all you have to do is just look around us here. You can't see, but you may be able to hear him from time to time. The uh, girls' basketball uh, from uh, Nevada, and uh, Wayne Newton happens to be uh, very uh, much, as far as uh, his singing is concerned, a person that the older people enjoy, too. Uh, Wayne, you don't just sing for the young people, do you? Well, no, ma'am. We have kind of been accused of being an anachronism. And if that be true, I would guess it, uh, it would come from the fact that we do primarily do songs that maybe the older people might enjoy in a new way and with new arrangements that, that maybe the younger people can enjoy. So we try to walk that very thin line mm -hmm. between the adults and the younger people and have enjoyed a modicum of success at it. Uh, would you be a, a bit more specific uh, as far as some of your background is concerned as the type of song and the type of musical background or the instrument background? As far as formal education in music, I've had none except for a year of uh, taking steel guitar lessons when I was six years old. <laughs> Otherwise, we have had a lot of practical education and experience mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the respect that I started at the age of six years old in country and western music and we stayed in country and western music and I invariably use the editorial we because it also refers to my brother and my manager. Uh, we stayed in country music up until the Elvis Presley period <laughs> and I'm sure you remember that and uh, then I there was, that. you remember that, <laughs> then there was no demand for country singers uh -huh. and we went into uh, for a very short time in a period of doing rock and roll music mm -hmm. and then we opened in, uh, in Las Vegas in 1959 I was 16 years old, and uh, we had to do a variety of music because what happened is from doing one or two shows a week in Phoenix, Arizona, we were thrown into a schedule of doing six shows a night, six nights a week that went on for five years. Mm -hmm. So consequently, we had to develop different kinds of music and different techniques. So we did a little country, a little rock and roll, a few standards, bordered on, on maybe light classical and uh, Broadway tunes. So we had a bit of, of, of education in all of those fields. And I think probably that's pretty much what we do now is a wide variety of music rather than one particular type. Two questions. The first one uh, you can answer real quickly, I think. Where are you from originally? Originally, Roanoke, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, wh what do you want to specialize in as you uh, become older? Well, as I look around, I kind of feel old right now. Uh, <laughs> As I get older, I, I think the, uh, I don't think there's a quick answer to that, so if I may elaborate, I think the time has come and gone that a singer can just stand and sing, mm -hmm. as the time has come and gone that a performer can just be a star in the United States. Uh, you have to do more things than just sing. You have to be a performer, for instance, and you have to strive to be an international star. Now, what this means is to embellish your career and try to take in possibly acting, if you're able to do it, uh, maybe a weekly television show or specials, records, nightclubs, uh, concerts, fair dates, and rodeos. If mm -hmm. you can do all those kind of things, then of course it's a little easier to achieve some kind of longevity. Now what in your background have you done or are you doing now? Because now you have a special coming up. Yes, ma'am. And this is part of the entire background yes, as, uh, as far as preparation for where you're going in the future. We have very uh, definitely planned, rather than having it be accident, what we want to do in the future and taking concrete steps uh, in hopes that when the future comes and when those things are there that we have constantly hoped for that we will be able to do it such as motion pictures. I have done three or four or five uh, dramatic television shows mm -hmm. which I've enjoyed immensely and, uh, and I hope to do more. Uh, our special is certainly a prime example of what I'm talking about in the respect that the concept is called One More Time. Mm -hmm. And if I may mention the guest stars briefly, yes. I'll take a deep breath. <laughs> we have Tennessee Ernie Ford, Count Basie, Case Starr, the Mills Brothers, Johnny Ray, Frankie Lane, Louis Belson, Louis Jordan, Charlie Barnett, Les Brown, and Paul Weston. Mm -hmm. Now, and I might add that this is. Would you care to breathe now? <laughs> That's it. It is ABC, right. and it's right in front of the Academy Awards. Right. And the whole premise of the show is to go back and recreate. We hope we have some of the greatest moments in music with the people who made them great. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it was uh, quite, a, quite a kick for me. I loved it. 
Now, you're, uh, you're doing records now. That's yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, does this, how long have you been doing big seller records? <laughs> well, it varies. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first one? The first one was a, a tune called Heart uh, that got into the top 20 across the nation, and then along came Don Shane, and then Red Roses, and then Apple Blossom Time, and Summer Wind, and so on down the line. But we have got into an area of recording also that's kind of unique in the respect that we probably sell more album records than single records. Usually what happens is you record a single, if it becomes a hit, then the album, the, it comes right out of the single. You know, now you go and do an album. Do you record the, the single and the album at the same time? Not necessarily. And as a matter of fact, when you're proving yourself, as we had to on many occasions, you record a single record first because it's a lot cheaper for the record company to produ produce a single record than an album. And then once the single record becomes a hit, they will request that you go on and do an album. Then do you have to re-do uh, it to record for the album? No, ma'am. What they do is take the master off of the single and usually uh, title that for instance, Walking on New Grass mm -hmm. is the title of my brand new MGM album. There is a tune in there called Walking on New Grass. So what mm -hmm. you do is record probably 11 songs in an album, and you take what you think could possibly come out as a single or has been a single mm -hmm. and title the album after that. And so then uh, you can include in different albums, some of, uh, depending upon the title and the composition, different songs, and it may be a repeat sometimes of right. one from before. For instance, we, uh, we've done Don Kishin, I think, in three different albums, mm -hmm. uh, one being the title album from the tune. Secondly, I did a uh, Wayne Newton in-person album at the Crescendo a few years back, <coughs> and actually we do Don Kishin in our act, so it was repeated again. Same with Red Roses in those tunes. Well, Wayne, I want time for people to be able to put the voice with the name. This is Wayne Newton, and let's listen to a record from the new album, Walking on New Grass, by MGM. Great. <laughs> 